Lord. Amen. We are finished with day number 13. And it's marvelous. Amen. You will not realize the full benefits of the fastings if you have not been having your quiet time. Because most of the prayer topics are meant for meditation. And as you focus on them and meditate on them, you draw the blessings and the power that should flow through them. Amen. Amen. As you focus and meditate on the prayer topics, power begin to flow into you. And we are going to have some more time beginning from Thursday. Some more time to pray this 14 sets of prayer topics. We will have time to pray some of them again. And to have them explained in a better way. But whatever the case. Don't miss any of the meetings. On. Thursday. To. Next week Wednesday. Amen. Tomorrow we'll be coming back. Today is Tuesday evening. So we are going to close. Amen. But I just want to teach you. The focus of tomorrow's waiting. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. But tomorrow we are believing God to receive grace. To stand with our pastor. Until death do us apart. We want to pray for grace. To fall in love with our pastor. To covenant with our pastor. To stand with our pastor. Until we die. And even in the grave. We wish to have our grave next to that of our pastor. So that when we are going to heaven. We will fly together. Say amen to that. You know there is one thing you need to understand. When men die. They go to one of two places. When you go and bury people, it is only the body that is buried in the cemetery. But the soul goes to a place. Either you go to hell or you go to paradise, to the bosom of Abraham, where we go to wait. So there are people waiting. In the bosom of Abraham. And some are waiting in hell. Amen. Those who have believed. In Christ. And shall. Stay to the end. When they die. They go to rest. But those who reject Christ. When they die. They go to a place of. Suffering. And the lake of fire. Is the final destination of all those in hell. Amen. All right. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse one to five. Finally, brethren, pray for us. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free cause and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not the faith but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil and we have confidence in the Lord touching you That you both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord directs your hearts into the love of God. And into the patient waiting for Christ. Say amen to that. Alright. One of the main things is this. No pastor on earth has what it takes and the ability. To do the work of ministry alone. 
no pastor. Every pastor needs help. And the people who come to believe through his ministry must be there to support him as he tries to reach other people. Because the gospel must not end with you. It must also travel to other people who are still dead in their sins. The teaching must not end with us. The teaching must move on and bless other people who have not heard the teaching. And when we talk about honoring your pastor, honoring your pastor is not a day. It is a continual something that you do. Amen. And Apostle Paul is actually praying for his church and believing God that they will stick with him and stay with him to the end. He said that the Lord will direct your hearts into the love of God. So your heart must be directed into the love of God and not the love of money. Your hearts must be directed into the love of God and not the love of a woman. Your hearts must be directed into the love of God and not the love of a man. He said that the Lord will direct your hearts. So it means that if God does not even direct your heart, your heart could go astray. The heart of Solomon was led astray by the many women he loved in his old age. The heart of Samson was led astray by Delilah. So God must direct our hearts. How do you stand with your pastor? Is it about going to Facebook and writing, I stand with my pastor? How do you really stand with your pastor? When we say that you are standing with your pastor, how do you really stand with your pastor? How do you really show your love towards your pastor? How do you show everyone that I'm in love with my pastor and there is nothing you can do about it? And let me tell you something. Listen to this before I even give you just three simple steps. Read all of the Bible. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Let me tell you one thing. There is no place in the Bible where you will find a demon fighting another demon. There is no place. If you find a Bible scripture that says that two demons were fighting, come and show me that scripture. One day Jesus went to cast out devils and some people said he was casting out devils by the power of Beelzebub. And he said no. The devil has an orderly kingdom. And that kingdom is not divided against itself. Listen, I'm telling you something. If you see two demons fighting, please run away. Don't try to separate. It's a trap. It's like when you are working at UTC and you see two people fighting. Don't go and stand there and watch. And don't try to say, because most often, the people fighting are just corporates. They want to steal your money. And they just pretended to be fighting because they saw you. If you go and stand there, they will steal your money. Some of you don't know you, you don't know Accra. But I've told you about a story. So that when you go there and you see two people arguing, don't go and stand there. You see somebody showing magic, don't go and watch. He's not a magician, he's a pickpocket. Is he good preaching? Demons don't fight each other. The only people who fight each other are Christians. And the worst of it is when you find a church member fighting his or her pastor. A church member doing things to frustrate what the pastor is trying to build. That is, that is more wicked than even demons fighting a pastor. But we are delivered from such an evil spirit in the name of Jesus. 
So we are not going to fight what our pastor is building. We are going to stand with him. Because listen, if we are divided against each other, we shall not stand. And anybody who says anything, let me tell you something. Anybody who says anything that has the potential of dividing us has not worked for God. That person has worked for the devil. I'm telling you, anybody. For if a kingdom be divided against itself, it cannot stand. When a wife is fighting a husband, that family won't stand. And when a husband is fighting a wife, that same way, it won't stand. So we want to receive grace. And listen, he said that the Lord will direct your hearts. Take us back there. That the Lord will direct your hearts into the love of God. That Jesus will direct your hearts into the love of the Father. And into the patient waiting for Christ. And into the patient waiting. Listen, if your heart is not directed, you will become impatient. And you cannot wait for Christ to the end. So how do you stand with your pastor? Number one. If you are standing with your pastor, you will pray for your pastor. You will pray for your pastor. Go to this one. And one of the reasons why you pray for your pastor is not everybody in the church is actually a church member. Some of the people are false brethren. Some of the people are beasts. They are people with witchcraft spirits. Am I preaching to you? Yes, and it doesn't matter who the person is. They can be witches. Am I preaching to you? Not everybody in the, there are people in the church who try to direct the church with their attitudes. So pray for us who are the us. Pray for the pastor and his helpers. Pray for us that the word of the Lord that the word of the Lord will have a free course and be glorified. Sometimes the pastor is teaching in the church and the word is not glorified in the eyes of the people who hear it. And the, the thing is, the pastor loses nothing. The truth is, you are praying these prayer topics now. I prayed it around midnight. The one you are going to pray tomorrow, I prayed it the whole day. I'm going to pray. So if you come and you don't pray, you lose. I don't lose. And as I'm preaching, if the word is not glorified, if what I'm saying does not sound sensible enough to make you want to have it as your property, the problem is a devil has blinded you. If our gospel be hid, it is hidden to those whom the God of this age have blinded the eye of their understanding. So your problem is you lack understanding. That's why you don't see the glory in the word. Lift up your right hand and say, I receive deliverance. No, am I preaching to you? Am I preaching to you? It's very important. You must. I said that the word would have a free cause. Will have a free cause. And be glorified. Even as it is with you. So tomorrow, you, are, you must pray for me. Pray for me and say that, Lord, I pray for my pastor. That when he comes to church and he's preaching, let other people be able to receive the word the way I receive it. Let everybody understand it the way I understand it. Let everybody place value on what the pastor is saying the way I place value on it. He said, let it have a free course. Sometimes the word does not have a free course. As the word of God is coming, an evil spirit from your mother's house comes into your heart and begin to block the word from entering into your spirit and into your heart and you lose the preacher doesn't lose anything because you don't know this i'm teaching you so i know it glory to god so pray for your pastor go to verse 2 pray for your pastor glory to god we are going to pray for our pastor and also that we may be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men for all men that are, there are some people who are wicked there are some people who are very unreasonable. They are so wicked and so unreasonable. 
And sometimes when you are being wicked and unreasonable, you never see it. Are you getting the point? Yeah. Sometimes you are wicked and you are very unreasonable. And people who are wicked and unreasonable, they are wicked and unreasonable because they do not have faith. If you don't have faith, you become very unreasonable in your demands. Am I preaching to someone? You become very unreasonable in what you demand. Go to verse 3. Let me give you the second key. Then, and he, he's giving us a prophetic word. He said, but, I mean but, in spite of the fact that there are wicked and unreasonable people in the world, do not be afraid at all. Because we set the God who is able to establish you and to keep you from all evil. People can plot evil against you, but it won't work. Are you getting the point? Because God is able to, he is faithful and able to establish you and to keep you from evil. May the Lord establish you and keep you from evil all the days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Go to verse 4 and let's read the second thing you can do. The second thing you can do if you say you truly love your pastor, if you say that you are really standing by your pastor, if you say you want the church to grow, you want the church to advance, one of the things is you must, you must obey what the pastor has commanded you. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you do and will do the things we commanded you. He didn't say we begged you to do or pleaded with you. It is a command. When you come to church, get a notebook and a pen. Take notes. It's a command. You do it. We said that come to church. We are fasting and praying. So fast. Fast and pray. We tell you that you, 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 you. I mean, all the things we have commanded you. All the things we have commanded. He said, if you truly love your pastor, you do the things he has commanded you to do. When your pastor commands you to do something, you do it. It's a sign that you love him. It's a sign that you are standing by him. It's a sign that you don't want to frustrate him. It is a sign. And he said, we have confidence in this. You must be able to bring your pastor to a point where your pastor can say that I have confidence in the fact that Gloria will listen to what I commanded her to do. I have confidence. Your pastor must be able to come to that point. Your pastor must be able to come to that point where the pastor can say that Sami will do what I have told him. One thing is that all the missionaries who have gone out and are preaching in the various branches we have, if I don't have confidence that they are doing what I have asked them to do, it means they are not standing by me. If Pastor Jemfi goes to Kaswa and does the things he wants there because I'm not there, it means that he's not standing by me. He's not gathering with me. So he's trying to scatter what I have gathered. If Pastor Joe stays at Sandra Chapel and does what he likes, it's a sign he's not standing with me. If the Knesset go to Ablaje and that's what he likes there, he's not standing with me. Those who are standing with me are those whom I can confidently say. Those I can confidently say that they have been doing and they will continue to do that which I have commanded them. It's not like when you see me, you behave like an angel. And then when you move out of my presence, you are a little devil. No. Rather be a little devil in my presence and be an angel when you are away. And listen, we must come to that place where we can preach with boldness in the church. I'm a preaching to someone. The sign that you are standing by your pastor is when you will do what he has commanded you to do. It's a command. Not what he begs you to do. What he has commanded you. Have you received any commandment from your pastor? Have your pastor commanded you concerning anything? Has your pastor commanded you concerning anything? Do it. It's a sign that you honor him. It's a sign that you are standing by him. It's a sign that you love him. Lift up your right hand and say, I receive grace to both do and will do the things I am commanded to do. Say amen to that. And it is a command. Don't say, hey, why do you always have to talk to me like that? Please shut up. You are commanded to do it. So you just do it. It's a command. And then number five. Let me give you the third one. A third sign that shows that you are standing by your pastor. You love your pastor. And you want what your pastor to doing is to advance is go to verse 5 
is the fact that you will fall in love with God and endure to the end. Because listen, you are the crown of my joy and my glory. If I get to heaven and I'm looking for you and I can't find you, I have wasted my whole life. Because when I go to heaven, I cannot go and take the church members of Pastor Chris and show them to God and say, that's him. no, 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 you are my fruits. You are my joy. You are the crown of my glory. You are the people I'm going to show to Jesus. That is why Apostle Paul says that if I'm jealous, I'm jealous because I have espoused you. I have espoused I must show you to Christ and receive a reward for my labor. So don't let my labor be in vain. Don't let my labor be what? In vain. Don't let my labor be in vain. He said, and that the Lord will direct your hearts into his love. Into his love. Glory to God. Am I preaching to someone? Then say amen and let me know you are here. You are my crown and my glory. Glory to God. I'm not going to lose you. I'm not going to lose you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Yes, I'm not going to lose any one of you. Any one of you. One day, Apostle Paul wrote a letter to one of the churches. He said, you are making me feel like I have labored in vain. Because you started in the spirit and you seem to be backsliding because you have allowed someone to bewitch you. You have allowed someone to bewitch you. You have allowed someone to bewitch you. Am I preaching to you? I said, am I preaching to you? You have allowed someone to bewitch you. May the Lord deliver you from every kind of bewitching in the mighty name of Jesus. May the spirits of pride and fear and anxiety that tries to rob you of your crown be rebuked right now. And let all that believe lift up your right hand and say big amen to that. You are delivered from the spirits of witchcraft, from the spells and curses and the hexes and the disguise and the lies. Sometimes someone is advising you and they speak as if they love you so much. But the truth is that they don't love you one bit. They love themselves. They love themselves. Every advice they are giving you is not about your well-being and advancement. It is about themselves. It's about what they want. It's about some, sometimes they are, the advice they are even giving you is to empower them to be able to afflict someone. May the Lord rebuke such an evil spirit out of our church. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord rebuke such a spirit out of our church. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So you are going to follow. You are going to follow your pastor like Ruth followed Naomi. Ruth did not follow Naomi for marriage or for, or, or for children or for wealth or for benefit. She just followed because she wanted to follow and have a relationship and a serious connection, an unbreakable covenant with her. May the Lord give you such a commitment in the name of Jesus. I said may the Lord give you such a commitment in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you make it feel like um, if the pastor doesn't have anything to give then there is no reason to be submitted to him that makes you a gold digger if you follow the pastor because of something he can give i mean it's a very bad spirit but you must your hearts must be directed into the love your hearts must be directed into the love of god and into the patient waiting for christ and into the patient waiting for christ all of us are here waiting for christ whether life is good or bad all of us shall see Jesus. And as many as are looking for his second coming, he shall return and take them back home. They shall be raptured. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. And may you stand by your pastor. May you tell yourself that if I go wrong, my pastor will rebuke me. It is not and if he goes wrong, I will rebuke him. Please. If I go wrong, come up to me and say, Pastor, this one you have done is wrong. Don't arrange chairs and tables behind my back as if you can be a judge 
of my actions and course. You don't have such an authority. You don't have it. In fact, no matter what the reasons for such a thing, it is, it is unacceptable. Walk up to me and say, Pastor, you are wrong in this matter. Apostle Paul told Peter, he said, Peter, you are wrong. So when you go wrong, I'll rebuke you. When I go wrong, rebuke me. But one thing is, we are making a covenant. We are making a commitment to stick with one another. I just want to say that, I just want to say that, I want to finish the race with you. Listen, Cathedral, let me finish off with this. Let me finish off with this. Let us make a commitment and say that those of us here will build this church. We must grow to a point where we don't need Pastor Joe to come before our services will run. We don't need it. And let me tell you, there is great grace in the church. If the Kinebram has been able to lead us for the past 13 days, every day leading prayer, listen, it is great grace. And I pray that the Lord will give you humility in heart and direct your heart into deeper love for God and be looking forward for the second coming of Christ. Not the day you buy a Mercedes Benz. Not the day you will marry. Marriage is not a determinant. It is not a goal. It is just a life process, a decision, a choice. You can marry tomorrow if you want. Am I preaching to you? But listen, those of us can decide to build the cathedral. If this is the only church we have, we can build it. Let us make that commitment and say we'll stand by our pastor. We'll stand by our pastor. And let me tell you this. Whatever you did yesterday doesn't matter. What you are going to do from tonight, as you have heard this word, is what matters. May the Lord direct your heart into his love. And into the patient waiting for Christ. May the Lord direct your hearts. May you obey my commandments. And may you pray for me. Pray for me. If you pray for me, you won't criticize me. If you pray for me, you don't need any investigation. The Lord will teach you everything you need to know about me. To help you to be able to pray. Pray for your pastor. Obey his commandments. And may you fall in love with God and patiently wait for the coming of Christ. May the Lord release such a grace upon our church. May none of you fall by the wayside. I pray that any device of the enemy that was marshaled against you, any device of the enemy that was activated against your life, we crush it now by fire and by thunder, seductions and entrapments, fear and anxiety. They are rebuked right now. Hexes and curses. They are broken right now. Spells and charm. They have no power. Masquerade and lies and disguise. And they keep your nice scent against you. They are exposed by light. Against soothsayers. We declare that the Lord shall expose soothsayers and diviners. He shall frustrate their tokens. In the name of Jesus. And let all that believe shout a big amen. The Lord is on your side and victory is your portion. Congratulations for day number 13. And as we move into day number 14, may the Lord give you grace to be able to fast. In Jesus' mighty name have I prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. We are finished. I prayed for you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I declare to you, you shall not die, but as you live, declare the testimonies of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Congratulations.